now let us examine the sacroiliac joints. These are, to a greater part, synovial joints. They are formed between the iliac bones and the sacrum. The lateral wings of the sacrum have a roughened hyaline cartilage known as the auricular surface. These interlock and articulate with the ilia. They form a strong and stable joint capable of transferring forces from the lower extremities to the spine and vice versa. This joint is reinforced by the interosseous, posterior and anterior sacroiliac ligaments. Further stability is added by the iliolumbar, sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. A small degree of movement is possible in the sacroiliac joints. The sacral canal contains the lowest parts of the coda equina and the anterior and posterior nerve roots of S1 to S5. The end of the canal forms the attachment for the meninges, known as the phylum terminale. There are anterior and posterior foramina through which the sacral nerve roots emerge to innervate structures in the pelvis and lower extremities. Begin the examination of the sacroiliac joints with general observation of the pelvic complex. Is there any anterior or posterior rotation and note its relation to the lumbar spine? Note any antalgic gait. Does the patient list to one side? The sacral angle is normally at 30 degrees. Note if this is increased or decreased. Identify the surface features of the pelvis, the anterior superior iliac spine, the posterior superior iliac spine, the position of the ischial tuberosities, and iliac crests. Assess their position and symmetry. Then assess the active movements which relate to this region. With the patient standing, ask them to perform the same movements as we have demonstrated earlier with the lumbar spine. This produces shearing and torque forces through the sacroiliac joints. Get them to flex, extend, rotate and side bend the lumbar spine. In addition, check their weight bearing by getting them to stand on each leg in turn. As with the lumbar spine, combined movements may be used to help approximate or separate different structures to assist in your differential diagnosis. For example, extension and side bending may provoke pain from the sacroiliac joints by increasing shearing forces. Likewise, combining flexion and side bending may help to diagnose iliolumbar ligament dysfunction contralaterally. Passive movements are not routinely performed and in order to gain valuable information, you will need to develop refined palpation skills as any movement will be subtle. Position the patient on their side with their knees and hips flexed. With your forearm, place pressure on the patient's uppermost iliac bone to produce a posteromedial shearing force. In the same position and using the same contact, change the vector of force to push inferiorly towards the examination plinth. This produces a gap in force at the sacroiliac joints. Another evaluative technique would be to fully flex the patient's uppermost knee and hip and support their leg on your hip. Your forearm contacts the ischium and anterior superior iliac spine. From this position, you can produce either an anterior or posterior rotational movement through the sacroiliac joints. The sacroiliac joints can also be sheared by placing the patient in a supine position. Then flex one of their hips and knees. Place your free hand flat under the sacroiliac joint. Apply a force onto the flexed knee through the length of the femur towards the pelvis and through the sacroiliac joint.